I'm going to have to do some editing here. Come on. There we go. All right. So a little over a year ago, our church put on this, uh, it was called the Catalyst Conference. And I was asked to be a keynote. And so this is the presentation. So I'm, you know, kind of letting people know who I am. Uh, you know, I joined the Navy to box in 1981. And I got to, I got to do a lot of boxing. I got to meet some, you know, had 17 spar partners, either won a world title or fought for a world title. Um, mm -hmm. Roy Jones Jr. And uh, me and Roy were really good friends. Um, and then, of course, I joined the SEAL teams because uh, somebody told me that if I went to the SEAL teams, they'd send me the Navy box team, and that's what I did. Traveled the mm -hmm. world, been to like 33 different countries. Um, it was very interesting. Got out, I started, I, I, didn't, I didn't know enough about money and finance, so I started self-educated. I read all these books about personal finance and debt management. This book here, uh, these two books, my wife bought for me because they had boxing gloves on the cover. Uh, they're spiritually uh -huh. based, Christian based books uh, written by a guy named John Evan Zini, uh, War on Debt, Breaking the Power of Debt, and, and Rapid Debt Reduction Strategies. And I learned about mm -hmm. a debt, a debt roll-up strategy, okay? Um, and uh, that helped my, I got myself out of debt. Now, I answered, I had the paper as a debt management consultant. Um, I wrote more business for that company my first month than anybody else had done for them in a year and a half. And then maybe the manager. Mm -hmm. And uh, every time I showed somebody how to get out of debt, they started looking at buying a house and I got in the mortgage business. And then, so I've had, you know, I've done all kinds of things in, in, uh, in the financial world. And then I, 2006, when things got crazy uh, with the construction business, I, I was, I specialized in construction lending. And mm -hmm. uh, that took the hit in 2006, that industry did. And I shifted to uh, uh, commercial lending and that was feast or famine, but that's when I stumbled into financial services. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, All this and from the humble beginnings of a Navy SEAL and you've arrived to where you are now. That's pretty impressive. Well, thank you. Um, I uh, stumbled on uh, this guy that uh, did all the, uh, he's the guy that created this credit scoring platform for the mm -hmm. credit bureaus, and he created a consumer dashboard called Score Navigator. It's, I have a link to it on my website, mybusinessisyourbusiness.info. If uh -huh. for, 50, for $50 a month, you can manage uh, all three credit bureaus. If you want a 720 FICO score, it'll tell you exactly what you need to do to get your score to 720. My score was 715 last year. Well, that's good for you. You don't need to worry about that then. Yeah. So the uh, Well, I do. I made some mistakes, but I'm going to get it back up. Okay, go ahead. Okay. And then so, you know, the very big baseline that people have to do is they have to get the budget. You, know, you have to know what's coming in and what's going out. And uh, that's one of the things we help people with. Um, you know, we this is uh, some graphics from the company I was working for at the time. Uh, mm -hmm. with all, all the services they provide. I'm not with that company anymore, but I was when mm -hmm. I made this presentation. All right. And uh, this is uh, showing a debt roll up. And I, I pilfered this graphic mm -hmm. off of a presentation, a PowerPoint that we used to do for people, showing somebody whose total debt is almost $400,399,750, paying wow. $2,782 a month to service that debt add an extra hundred dollars into it. Um, so paying $2,882 um, a month to service the debt, getting out of debt in 17 and a half years. And then I read this book called The Pill Method. <clears throat> and so he's talking about how there's a certain amount of, uh, the way they amateurize your debt schedule on a mortgage. In the very beginning, the majority is interest only a little bit so this guy's got three hundred and thirty eight thousand four hundred dollars uh in uh, a mortgage debt at a five percent interest rate 
his uh, payment is $1,816. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, $1,816 uh, $16 a month. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he'd be in, you know, doing this debt roll up with that hundred dollars gets him out of debt instead of 30 years, everything, including the mortgage in 17 and a half years. Well, this guy with, so he's going to save himself $417,300 in interest. Okay. By paying it off 12 years faster. Okay. Or hang on. It's 1700. So actually 12, yeah, a little over 12 years, about 12 years faster. Right. Well, mm -hmm. this guy's got this pill method, $500 a month of that mortgage payment goes toward principal. Okay. And this is on 417,000. No, this is on the, this is on the, uh, 417,300. That's how much interest he's saving. Wow. The, the total debt is 399750 Of that, 338400 is the mortgage. Okay? And so his um, paying, um, if you just paid an extra principal payment mid-month on the mortgage, so 11 days after your due date, so if you do in the first, you paid on the 12th, you'd pay that mortgage off in a little, little, little more than five and a half years faster. Okay, so you'd pay everything off, including the mortgage, in 12 years. Okay. And uh, save in a total of $606,253.44 in interest. That hmm. sounds pretty good, doesn't it? That's huge. <laughs> okay. Watch this. Okay. All right, so well, so this is showing. This is breaking it down. He's uh, taking eight, you know, um, eighteen years to pay everything off. Okay, mm -hmm. instead of thirty years. All right. The uh, but this strategy now. This is an illustration I did of a four hundred thousand dollar whole life policy that's got mm -hmm. a guaranteed interest rate of a little more than five percent. Okay, and it. It's taken me a year to grasp this concept. I've always been taught that whole life was bad. Okay, mm -hmm. the fees are too high, the interest rate's too low, right? Well, now I know it's because they weren't ever structured right. So this is an illustration, you can't really see it very well, so I blew it up. At year 10 on this policy, uh, contributing 3,000 a month. Okay, that right. counts the debt service plus the target premium on the policy. At year 10, the cash value in the policy is $315,178. So the amount of interest paid down on the mortgage by year 10 would be $54,000. So subtracting that from the $338,400, you'd have a balance left by year 10 of $284,000. So you can wow. borrow up to 90% of that policy balance, the balance of the cash value in a policy loan. So at year 10, you'd have paying the, paying the same amount of money. You'd be out of mm -hmm. debt in 10 years. All right. You borrow mm -hmm. the two... But by borrowing the $283,661 out of the policy and mm -hmm. paying off your debt. Wow. Paying, off the, paying off the mortgage totally by, in, by year 10. That's great. Okay. Right. It adds gas to the fire. Now, we, my, you know, Danny Kravitz, I think I had you talk to Danny before. Danny. Yeah. Um, has a really good uh, illustration talk, showing you how much you know you contributed into a you know a past client showing them how much you contributed to the policy. So this is this is an example of a 32 year old man. Actually, I just put the same birthday as my son. 
mm -hmm. right, in, in the policy, all right, and this is what, you know, a 32-year-old in good health would look like, what they could do with one of these policies. Now, after you borrow that money out of the policy mm -hmm. to, uh, to pay off the mortgage, you're paying yourself back. You literally become your own bank. I like this. All right, so I'm... Um, let me uh, stop sharing here. Okay. So on my website, um, my business is your business dot info. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw up this recording. Right? Okay. And then um, but I'm gonna be talking every Friday morning at uh, eight o'clock a.m. I'm doing a podcast, right? And so we're gonna talk about this and and expound on it this next Friday. Okay. But could you see? So you, you're going to send out invites? Yep, I'll send you an invite. So what, one question. So once you borrow that $283,000, you don't have to pay taxes on it, right? None of it, no. Wow, I that like that a, too. That's a good question, right? That's an excellent question, right? That's, yeah, that, that's right. That's That's the... RAS, IRS code 7702 alpha allows you to do that. And you don't have to no. be, you know, over 59 and a half to be able to take that money out as a policy loan to be exempt from the taxes. You can do it, you know, when you got the money. Okay. So we're going to talk about this, this strategy, and then how to use this as a uh, entrepreneur to have uh, the synchronistic business strategy. That's where you have a a business hub, you have multiple businesses that support each other. And you know, that's interesting because um, we're finally getting traction on our other projects. But, you know, I was a defense contractor and now I'm thinking about getting back into it because I, you know, I'm good at it. <laughs> but the problem is, was, and, you know, we're solving that problem. The problem was, you know, once you win the contract, it's still eight months before you get paid by the DOD because it takes about a year. Let me just tell you how defense contracts work. It takes about a year and a half for the prime contractor, like, say, Lockheed Martin or Northrop Grumman or Boeing you know, or Honeywell or, you know, Kinetic or any of the defense contractors that I have worked with off and on. It takes about a year to a year and a half just for them to ferret out the companies they're going to work with, the subcontractors. You've got to go through, jump through all the hoops and prove that you can provide the product, the service, the personnel. And then what happens is, then it's, so I would say, say a year to be, give them a little grace. Then it takes another eight months to a year for the government to decide, yes, we're going to give this prime contractor this contract, and this is how much we're giving them, and this is, you know, how much uh, they uh, are out, they can allocate to the subcontractors, right? So, and then once the damn contracts start, that takes probably another eight months, you know, for them to actually start. For everybody on the team, all the subcontractors who are working under Norfolk Grumman or Boeing or Lockheed Martin, you know, we have all gone through, you know, so you're talking two years of going through being qualified, um uh putting in your numbers how much you got what you're going to bring to the table who you're going to hire the resumes and cvs of the tech people the engineers that you're going to hire you know um all of that you know and then they put you into a matrix and create different teams for all the subcontractors you know i was always on the red team because i'm very organized and compulsive. So, you know, the people on the red team are making sure that everybody else 
all the other subcontractors dot all their I's and cross all their T's, okay? And respond in detail to the exact specification that the Department of Defense is asking for. And then what happens after that is after all of that headache and what have you, and you finally win, which we won, I won one, and you get the approval, you still have to have those operating costs that, you know, to set up to actually bring the people in who will work on the contract to actually get set up and everything for that specific contract. And so all during that time, a lot of that time, energy and money, it's coming out of your pocket. So this would be, and I'm giving you a billion dollar idea here because this would be great for defense contractors because you don't wanna to have to go to the bank to borrow money against the contract. And even though it's a DOD contract and the banks know that you're gonna get paid, it's, you know, it's still kind of, you. it's a fuzzy area between the time you bid, the time you um, are approved, the time that you go through all the, you know, all the steps of working with the prime contractor, the time that, you know, the DOD says we're ready and that, you know, you step up and you've got to prove you've got all these people available which some of them are on other jobs and some of them are consultants. And then finally, the government pays you like, you know, four months in. So all of that time you're operating without overhead and operating capital. It's all coming out of your pocket. And so something like it could develop a strategy, whereas whatever funds you know, um, you know, if for example, you buy one of those policies, I don't know how it would um, work with companies, but that's what you're saying that you're going to be talking about on Fridays, so that the, the subcontractors are not stretched out living on air until the Department of Defense pays us. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. And we'll 